Good morning, Facebook land and uh, my friends from Park Place Church. Uh, my name is John Phipps. I'm the pastor of Park Place Church in Pinellas Park, Florida. Uh, every morning I've been doing devotions with you. And uh, for those of you that are shut in, quarantined, or just hunkering down a little bit, uh, I hope to encourage you by sharing the word of God with you each and every morning. I uh, just want to remind you that tomorrow uh, I will um, be going um, and sharing a live message with you. This will be a church service uh, at Park. Uh, however, we want you to watch it online. So we are practicing uh, social distancing. And so we respect your privacy, but you can watch online. It will be a sermon on John chapter 3. I've been working through the Gospel of John. And so thank you for tuning in, Dan and Matt. See you there. Uh, today, I was thinking about a couple different things. I think, first of all, before we get into our devotion, I just want to share with you that um, this coronavirus is really, um, it's becoming more and more real to us, isn't it? Hi, Pam. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's starting to sink in as we are getting more and more concerned, uh, more alerts uh, from different people. Hi, Stan. And uh, I don't know about you, but at first it kind of seemed like something that might just kind of come and go and pass quickly. And uh, this might take a little while. We might be in this for a few weeks or even uh, several months. I'm hoping and praying that uh, our trajectory uh, will suddenly go downward, plateau, and then go downward in the next couple of weeks. And I really believe it probably will. I'm praying that it will. I'm praying that uh, restaurants and dining rooms will reopen, movie theaters will reopen soon. So join with me in praying for that and praying for those who need special care. Uh, before I get into my morning devotion though, I just want to remind you that we have a special ministry at Park Place Church. Uh, we're reaching people that are uh, affected by this. Uh, they are more fragile, therefore they have pre-existing conditions and uh, we are meeting their needs. We're bringing paper products to them and groceries to them so you can reach out to me or the church the church is still open park place church is still open pastors are still working and so um, if you would pay your tithe and support us that way that'd be great uh, because we want to bring goods to you but not only goods but we want to come and see you if we can uh, practice social distancing by still coming to you and uh, reading and uh, providing communion to you and praying over you even in your home or wherever you're at wherever you've decided to hunker down in your apartment or your uh, your place of work wherever it is you're at we would love to be a support to you Esther Tim good to see you all uh, and a thousand dollars has just come in for this new ministry so that was offered to us by a donor and I'm very grateful for that. And so that will go toward groceries and support uh, for people, not only that are Park Place Church folks, but also people uh, that are needy and in our community. And uh, so thank you to the person uh, who wishes to be anonymous, who has uh, offered $1,000 of seed money to help those in need during this uh, difficult time. Thank you, Brent, for watching. Uh, I'm honored to have you. Anyway, I want to share with you just a quick devotion. Uh, it's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and a little bit of chapter 12. And I think it seems um, appropriate for what we're talking about. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, just shared in uh, chapter 11. So if you have your Bible and you want to turn with me, Bill, good to see you. Uh, turn with me to chapter 11, Paul and the false apostles. Uh, he talks a little bit about those people that are following false apostles, those de de deceitful workers, those that are masquerading as apostles of Christ in verse 13. And in verse 14 of chapter 11, he says, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So therefore it is not surprising then uh, if this servants, if his servants, that is Satan's servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. And uh, Paul says their end will be what their actions deserve. And I know that there are many things that are going on in our world right now and many scams. So I encourage you to be very careful uh, of who you're listening to, what you're believing in our society right now. Uh, for certainly uh, Satan is trying to uh, stir up dissension among God's people and uh, create lies and uh, fear. And uh, we don't have to give in to that fear, do we? 
uh, we know that God is at work and we know that God's people are going to be doing good things, not bad things, not harming people or creating havoc uh, in the church. But uh, I want to specifically look at uh, uh, chapter 12 in 2 Corinthians. If you have your Bible, open it up uh, to chapter 12. Paul continues to speak and he says, I must go on boasting. This is one of the few times the Apostle Paul does decide to boast, and I think he is confirming the fact that he is one of the super apostles, if you will, along with Peter and John and the others. <clears throat> he says, although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from our Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows. He was caught up to paradise and he heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weaknesses. Thank you for joining us, Tiffany, Phil, and Philip. I just want to say a couple things about this. Yesterday, I... Uh, talked a little bit about the thief on the cross who Jesus said today you'll be with me in paradise and he was uh, and then paradise uh, is we we make a distinction between paradise and heaven we know that there will be a new heaven and a new earth uh, so I'm not going to get into all of that necessarily today but um, the apostle Paul is saying I will brag about a person who was caught up to the third heaven now there are three levels of heaven that we believe <clears throat> And the third heaven is probably the highest. This is where Paul is speaking about a man who was taken and caught up to the third heaven uh, through probably a vision or some sort of a revelation that he saw. Could have been a dream, but probably a vision. And we believe that he is speaking about himself in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And so he is saying, you know, 14 years ago, the Lord showed this man, presumably him, uh, inexpressible things that man is not permitted to tell and i love that <clears throat> so forget the fact that there are seven heavens there's probably three and uh paul is not boasting about these things though he saw things that um i would love to see one day i will see and i hold firm to the fact that jesus is going to reveal these things to me don't know that i'll be caught up to the third heaven uh be more than happy just to be a doorkeeper uh, in the in, in 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 the kingdom of God, <clears throat> I would be more than happy just to sweep floors in the kingdom of God. And Paul continues to go on, and he says, even if I should choose to boast in verse six, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I say. I like that, or because of these surpassingly great revelations that I've already expressed to you. Thank you for tuning in, Rusty, Sheila. Uh, he says, therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, and this is the basic premise of our passage today and why I wanted to share it with you. He said, I was given a thorn in my flesh. <clears throat> this is the Apostle Paul saying, a messenger of Satan. The thorn in his flesh is a messenger of Satan to torment me. Now in verse eight of chapter 12, he says this, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, and my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses. Thank you, Russell, for joining us. Diana, Josh. He says, I will boast all the more in my weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. This is us. This is what we're going through. This is what we're struggling with. Uh, there are so many things that we could be boastful about. And there are things that probably in the past we have been boastful about. And maybe like you, God has shown you great things. He has given you revelations. Maybe he has shown you the third and the greatest heaven of all, the highest heaven. But I am here to tell you today that we are not boasting in the things we have seen or learned. We are boasting in our weaknesses. I love this. 
He said, for in my weaknesses, I find great strength. He says, uh, my grace is sufficient for you, God said. My grace is sufficient. That means my grace is all you need. And he says, uh, for my power is made perfect in your weaknesses. So what are your weaknesses this morning? I know what my weaknesses are. I think that most people know what my weaknesses are. Uh, I will boast in my weaknesses like the Apostle Paul. If he can boast in his weaknesses, I can as well. Maybe we all need to be thinking about our weaknesses because therefore Christ's power will rest upon us because his power is manifested in our weaknesses. So what are our weaknesses? Are we prone to weakness in our flesh? Are we prone to weakness in our daily discipline of reading and prayer? Are we weak in our ability to understand scripture? Are we weak in our prayer time? Let's be honest about that. Are you taking time to uh, spend in God's word every day, therefore finding strength? Whatever it is, uh, Paul says uh, that there was a thorn, a tormentor of Satan, a messenger of Satan, a thorn in his flesh. And uh, God allowed that to happen to him. And he is reminding the church of Corinth that uh, he uh, pleaded with the Lord, if you will, three times that the Lord would remove this thorn from his flesh. Now, what is the thorn in your flesh? I'm not asking you to call me and tell me what it is. And <clears throat> I'm probably not going to share the thorn in my flesh with you today. That wouldn't be appropriate. Um, but, you know, sometimes we need to be thankful for the thorns uh, in our flesh. Now, I know that God is all-powerful and all-knowing. I know that God is a God of miracles, signs, and wonders, and we've seen his miracles. In fact, all of us are a miracle. Thank you for joining us, Joshua. Uh, but let me just encourage you today that our power is manifested in our weaknesses. We have to be sensitive to the fact that there are weaknesses. And Paul says, therefore, I will, I will boast more gladly about my weaknesses, that Christ's power may rest on me. My friends, this is humbling because God has allowed all of us to be humble. I remember when I first came to Park Place uh, just about two years ago, I had four companies and uh, I was riding a wave of some successes and some failures too, but uh, I was doing well in business. I had taken a five-year sabbatical from ministry and uh, now the Lord was calling me back into full-time ministry. I had a few dollars in my savings account and uh, I came in, I think, a little overconfident and uh, maybe even prideful about some things that were going on in my life. And the Lord has allowed a brokenness in my life. I'm not going to get into the details of it, uh, but it does involve my family and some difficulty that I have had to go through in my life and uh, has made me a different person. Uh, Milani, thank you for joining us. In just a couple years, God has shown me that I am a broken vessel, broken and spilled out, and I will glory in my weaknesses. I have a thorn in my flesh that God will not remove, and you, my friends, have a thorn in your flesh that God may not remove. Maybe he hasn't removed it yet. Maybe he will one day. I don't know. I hope and trust that he will. I hope that he will help you to find perfection in that, but even in our midst and our struggle, do you find contentment? That is my question for you today. Do you find contentment in your weaknesses? Do you find satisfaction and peace? Uh, thank you for joining us, Dan. Do you find peace in your weaknesses? Have you come to terms with the fact that some things God will not take away? Uh, God lets us suffer for a little while. And another piece of scripture God talks about, uh, Paul talks about the refiner's fire. I think it's Paul that writes about the refiner's fire, but um, the truth is God lets us suffer for a little while. He wants us to persevere. In this world, we will have trouble, but Jesus says, take heart for I have overcome the world. I love that verse. Thank you for joining us, Katie. Part of my very first youth ministry in uh, Oregon. And so God is speaking to us today. I hope that he is speaking to you. Take joy, my friends, in what you are suffering. Even this coronavirus, even in our difficulty, even in our uncertainty, even during this pandemic. Uh, thank you, Diana, for joining us. Uh, God 
loves us and allows us to struggle in our weaknesses. It is a beautiful day. You're right, Doug. It is a beautiful day to know Jesus. And yesterday, if you were with me and I taught a little bit, and I asked all of you to make a commitment to Jesus because we are living in uncertain times. We don't know how long this pandemic will last. But are you glory? Are you glorified in your strengths or are you glorified in your weaknesses? Because God is allowing you, like the Apostle Paul, to suffer for a little while. But we know that our suffering will end. Thank you, Mom, for tuning in. It's good to see you watching. And uh, I know that you're my biggest fan. Uh, you and Dina. Um, what is your weakness? Glory in your weaknesses. For my grace is sufficient for you, God says. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. Now, if anyone had a right to be prideful, it was Paul. Paul was a super apostle. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. Uh, he was one of Abraham's descendants. Um, he says, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent the night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in dangers from bandits, in dangers from fellow Jews, in dangers from Gentiles, in danger in the city. I've been in danger in the country, in danger in the sea, and in danger from false believers. He said, I have labored and toiled, and I have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst. I have often gone without food. I have been cold. I have been naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Thank you for joining us, Carol. He says, I face daily the pressures of concern for all the churches. Who is weak? And I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin? And Paul says, And I do not inwardly burn. But if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weaknesses. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under King Aretas had the city of the Damascus guarded in order to arrest me. But I was lowered in a basket from a window in the wall and slipped through his hands. My friends, if Paul can undergo all of these sufferings and still feel encouraged, then I want you to feel encouraged. I want you to glory in your sufferings. You know, lean into the pain and the suffering that God has for us right now. Lean into the uncertainty because that's going to draw us closer to Jesus more than anything else. And I hope that you're encouraged today. If Paul can undergo these types of sufferings that I have read to you, then we can certainly be quarantined. Then we can certainly go without some of our favorite foods. We can go without going to movies and having the freedom to go to the places we want to go to. Tonight, Dina and I were talking about having a date night, and she said to me, well, what things can we really do? Well, I don't know. Maybe we can go for a walk and, or go for a motorcycle ride, or maybe we can just sit and just bask in the sun for a little while. The beaches here in Florida are closed, but the truth of the matter is maybe the joy that we have is just being with each other. Maybe the greatest joy we have is just reading scripture to someone. Today at noon, I'm going to see my friends, part of Park Place Church. You know, um, Frank and and, uh, and Nathan and, and Trevor and some of those guys, I'm going to bring lunch to them. I'm going to be the hands and feet to Je of Jesus to them. And uh, so how can God help you serve someone else today? Maybe God is calling you to bring uh, some of the things you have in your house to share with others. But whatever it is, do what you have for the glory of God. Use what you have for the glory of God. Be the hands and feet for the glory of God. There is someone out there, my friends, who have it worse than you do right now, today. There is someone out there who doesn't know where their next paycheck is going to come from. Hi, Becky and Pat and Sheila. Thank you for joining us. There's someone out there who is part of the entertainment industry. Uh, they're not working right now. They're part of the service industry. They're not working right now. And uh, maybe God has put upon your heart to share something from your fridge with them. Maybe God has put upon your heart to give them a certain gift anonymously 
uh, or however you want to do it. Maybe God has put someone on your heart you need to pray for. And at this time, as God is drawing more people to him, thank you, Georgette, for watching. I just want to encourage you um, to pray for them, to lift them up, to get on the phone and call them. How can I meet your needs? God has put you on my heart and I am available to you. I will come and share communion with you and uh, reach out to Pastor John. I'm still working. I have, for, I have decided to forgo my, my salary for six weeks. They're, they're going to continue to want to pay me for six weeks. I'm not taking a salary for six weeks. Uh, I don't say that to boast. I say that because my salary will be used to help others uh, that don't have what I have. I have been very blessed, like many of you. I have been very blessed. And uh, I don't need a paycheck for six weeks. And uh, I have been um, uh, happy to do that. And if you are willing to do that, I want you to be able to give to others as others have great, great needs. People are having a hard time right now paying their mortgage payment, paying their electric bill. People right now are hurting. And so as I ask you to continue to pay your tithe if you can, uh, but also we pay our tithe. That is our first fruit, my friends. That means that comes off the top. It always came off the top. But whatever we have left, let us give. Uh, without worry let us give without concern that we have plenty in this country thank you uh, joy for watching us so whatever God has put upon your heart let us give with a cheerful heart understanding that those uh, among us are hurting and uh, those people need you more than ever I know these are uncertain times and I know that there is panic and there is fear in our society thank you Mo for watching but uh, I just want to encourage you to be a blessing to someone else. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. And do not give up praying. Do not be dismayed. For God is doing a new thing. And uh, God has allowed us to go through this pandemic. Just as he allowed Paul to have a thorn in his side. A thorn in his flesh. Uh, God didn't take it away. God isn't taking away our pandemic. I prayed it would, it would be gone instantly. I prayed that it will be gone before now. I prayed that it will be gone this week. And I don't know how long we're going to be dealing with this. But I do know that God says, My grace is sufficient for you and my power is made perfect in your weaknesses. So my friends, glory in your weaknesses. Please receive this blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We pray, God, for all those who are listening, that God, we will glory in our weaknesses. For we have plenty. Let us share with those who have nothing. Let us share with those who are out of work. Let us share with those, God, who need something. They need paper products. They need groceries, God. They need encouragement. Um, they're quarantined or maybe they're even sick with this coronavirus. God, help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. I pray that we would open up our heart to Jesus right now. I pray that we would love Jesus right now more. We would draw closer to you, Lord, than we've ever drawn closer to you in the past because of what's going on in our society. And Father, we will be faithful until the very end. We will give and we will pray and we will continue to love those, God, that need Jesus. And Father, if there is anybody who is listening to me today who is dealing with uncertainty and fear during this pandemic, they would open up their heart to Jesus by saying, Jesus, come into my life. I know I'm a sinner and I know I have failed you and I know my sin is great, but I lay my sin before you. And I, I ask you, God, to forgive me that you would cleanse me, that my heart would be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. There is no cleansing apart from the blood of Jesus, but you can wash me and make me white as snow. God, that you would come into my heart and into my life and change me, that I will never be the same, that I would walk with you, that I would be born again, that I would be a new creation in Christ. For I know there is no way I can come to heaven and I can know God apart from Jesus Christ. And so I thank you for those that have prayed that prayer with me today. And Jesus, I pray your Holy Spirit upon them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would go to a lost and hurting and dying world. And God, that you would unleash the hounds of heaven upon your people and upon those sinners and upon those that are seeking you right now. And that our world would open up their heart to the kingdom of God and to the Holy Spirit of God. We thank you, Jesus. I know it seems weird, but we want to thank Jesus for the trouble in our life. 
We thank Jesus for the difficulty that brings us to him. Thank you, Jesus. 93, there was such great trouble in my life that you brought me to a saving knowledge of who you are and that you're doing that every day. I thank you, God, for my weaknesses. I have many. You know what they are. And I thank you, God, that you allow me to suffer. You allow me to hurt. You allow pain in my life. And I thank you, God, that you say my grace is sufficient, John. My power is made perfect in your weakness, John. And you are saying that to all of us today. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness, your mercy, and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, I encourage you to tune in with us tomorrow. Uh, I, won't, I won't have a daily devotion with you at 11 a.m., but come to Park Place Church online. Don't come in person. Nobody's going to be there. I mean, we're not going to let you in. We're going to be there. Thank you for joining us, Trish. We're going to be there. Listen to the message. Be encouraged by John chapter 3. My friends, hold on to Jesus during these trying times. God is faithful. Thank you, Jenny, for joining us. We're praying for your family. Continue to lift up. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. And continue to love. And be encouraged. God has not changed his mind about you. He loves you. He may let you suffer, but he isn't far. Stay encouraged, my friends. And I'm here for you. Reach out to us. In Jesus' name, amen.